these communal experiences, these experiences in life that folks who go to summer camp, folks who go to Moisha House, folks who do other Jewish communal programs of various types. And the idea is, what if we turned that into a Jewish life experience? What if you could live as much of your life as you wanted to in a Jewish village? Hi, and welcome to the Z3 Podcast. My name is Amitai, and I'm the director of the Z3 Project. On today's episode, we'll be hearing from Roger Studley. He is the founder and facilitator of Berkeley Moshav and the founder of Urban Moshav. Berkeley Moshav is a community that's going to be built uh, in Berkeley this coming summer break ground, a co-housing and co-living situation. And Urban Moshav is an organization that helps scale uh, these communal settings and models uh, across the country. In our conversation, we cover how this came together, why it's important, how it can contribute to a meaningful Jewish life in a way that counters some of the fragmentation that we're seeing today. We talk about the inspiration and similarities and differences between what's going on in Israel and here in that sense, and how this lifestyle can contribute to a deeper um, sense of connection and a substrata of Jewish identity, not only here, but elsewhere uh, as well. And I hope you find this conversation meaningful. Please follow us in our different platforms. We have a, we're on the various social network platforms as LinkedIn, uh, X, Instagram, uh, and, uh, Facebook and follow us, please, uh, on your favorite podcast platform and uh, sign up to our newsletter. Uh, more about uh, the Berkeley Moshe will also be found in the description uh, of this episode, so you can learn more about the specific project. Uh, take a listen. We hope you enjoy it. So, Roger, welcome to uh, the Z3 Podcast. It's really great to have you here on campus. Thank you, Amitai. I'm pleased to be here. Yeah, and to meet in person. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's always uh, after Zoom conversations in person. It's like, a, you know, a really appropriate yeah. height. I never know if it's, like, you know. <laughs> Uh, but but really, it's it's. Uh, I really do appreciate you coming down here and, and having this conversation. And uh, today, you know, we want to hear from you about uh, your work. Yeah. And I know there's several things that are happening going on, kind of uh, that complement each other and are connected. And, and I'm sure we'll we'll get into it. Um, but before we get into that side, I think that it's helpful for our audiences, you know, in, in this in these types of conversations that we have, is to get to know you a little bit, hmm. to to humanize it and to personalize and just to kind of get to know um, the story. Yeah. Behind yeah, so why yeah. like. How are you doing what you're doing and why we're here? It doesn't have to be like a long version, but you know, just. Right, I mean, let me just start with what we're doing so that people kind of know why I'm here. Yeah. And I mean, uh, you know, the shortest thing, which, which will need some unpacking is um, we're creating a Jewish co-housing community. And right now I'm doing this in Berkeley. So it's called Berkeley Moshav. Um, the, 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 there's a lot I could say about it, but to start by kind of analogy, um, I let one of the analogies I like, I like to use is to, call, is to bring to mind Jewish summer camp. Mm. Okay, so imagine a Jewish summer camp. Now imagine that that summer camp was year-round. Imagine that it was all ages, multi-generational, kids and, and seniors and everyone in between, families living there. Um, and imagine it's for people that, you know, not like, this, like the idyllic setting of camp, but it's for people with jobs and responsibilities and all of that. Right? That's what we're trying to create, kind of a sort of a, a Jewish village in like the model of like a Jewish village you might think of in you know, whatever olden days means mm. to you. Um, another analogy I sometimes use is think of Moisha House, mm. right? Uh, but now, you know, again with Moisha House, um, make it all ages, make it where you um, own your home, um, and make it where you can live there for as long as you want, right? You're not age limited or time limited or anything like that. Um, you know, so th it, it's, it's that sort of proposition. It's thinking of these communal experiences, these experiences in life that folks who go to summer camp, folks who go to Moisha House, folks who do other Jewish communal programs of various types. Like it's these Jewish communal experiences yeah. um, that, that people have typically when they're younger, but not exclusively, that are kind of these experiences in life, these communal experiences in life. And the idea is, what if we turned that into a Jewish life experience? Yeah. What if you could live your, as much of your life as you wanted to in a Jewish village, right? So you referenced yeah. this earlier, like what we used to think of, like these Jewish communal settings, but unlike those where we were, we were, sometimes, we were often forced into those, this is voluntary and it's permeable, right? Because yeah. you go in and out, right? You're right. not just kind of like, so a permeable shtetl. Shtetl, shtetl 2.0, yeah. right, or 3.0 by name. Z3, yeah. shtetl 3.0. <laughs> we'll skip the two. Um, yeah. Right, right. So, so really the idea is to like, how can we, you know, we got a lot out of that. I mean, yes. There were um, terrible, terrible parts of being in the shtetl. But there were, there were, we also had a kind of community that, that people don't have, Jews don't have everywhere else. Right. Um, the Lower East Side in New York back in the day, like, again, we had, there was this community. There was people lived among other Jewish people. There, um, they could um, 
you could, you know, ex you could experience and express your Jewish identity throughout your daily life. You weren't, your Jewish life wasn't compartmentalized the way it is for most of us in the U.S. today. Now, I know in some communities it's not, the, you know, especially tr traditional communities, it's not necessarily compartmentalized. And so another way to think of this is like, what, what makes the Orthodox world so compelling and how can, we, how can we take those best practices and even if you're not Orthodox, how can we have that kind of connection and belonging and, 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 and daily experience of, of being Jewish. So I imagine we're getting so, much more into this. Yes, like, that's I'm already whole, like right. trying to like <laughs> stop myself but, from asking. So it's like this and kind of like right, that. But so before right. we get there, so that was, yeah. that's super helpful in like contextualizing why we're here. But how, like, how does that happen? How does, how does, how does one get this idea to create <laughs> shtetl 3.0 um, or a communal, center, communal living that is right. um, um, conducive to multi-generational You know, content. it came in steps, okay. I would say. Um, um, you know, I, I, I had a kind of a standard American Jewish background, upbringing, whatever. Uh, my family moved to Florida when I was eight. We were part of a startup, Reconstructionist synagogue, um, very startup, so, you know, my, I was, I was our synagogue was, at the time, three storefronts in a strip mall. Mm -hmm. So I was bar mitzvah in a strip mall. Um, uh, it, it didn't speak to me, right? The, I was the, like the bar mitzvah factory experience, but it wasn't meaningful and it didn't really speak to me. And so throughout the rest of my teens, through my undergrad years, I, you know, I went to, sometimes I went to a Seder, sometimes I went to the high holidays. Um, I was really sort of disconnected until I wound up back in college and I got, I started getting a communal experience of Jewish life on my, first of all, on my own terms, but second of all, through like Berkeley Hillel, right? Where you kind of walk in the door and there's this whole Jewish community and it's all flavors of Jewish community. And people are close and connected and they become friends and they become, you know, they, um, you see each other all the time and, and that's what a community is about, right? So I started to experience that. I started to experience, it wasn't just I had, you know, a friend over here and a friend over there, but I had a whole bunch of friends that were all friends with each other, which in a way is like what community is about. Everyone's connected to each other and you can just sort of be cradled by that. Anyway, I'm kind of getting off of me and getting onto like, you know, the motivation, but part of it was at Berkeley Hillel, I experienced community. Um, um, going to a Jewish song leader camp, mm. right? A retreat, really, not a camp. Um, I never went to Jewish summer camp. That, in some ways, it, I mean, you can think of this as like, I never went to Jewish summer camp. I have to recreate it for myself. But when I had those little experiences, like going to um, uh, the song leader camp or, you know, um, young adult weekend at Camp Swig and, you know, and all these, or, 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 or spending three weeks at the conservative yeshiva in Jerusalem at one point. Like, all these experiences, of that sort of, they're, they're focused on Jewish tradition, but you know, the, the community piece is hugely important and they marry those two things. And so when I was in grad school and going and found myself at Berkeley Hillel and all those other things I mentioned, I started getting this sense of, yeah, like there's something about Jewish community that I, I, you know, I had sort of thrown the baby out with the bathwater. So, okay. And kind of along that same trip, that's, I Maybe mean, it's not the right word, but like, um, you know, my journey, I guess, is what I'm looking for. Um, I came across co-housing, and, and it's got nothing to do with being Jewish. It's a model of um, intentional community and that, um, intentional neighborhood that came, that developed like 50 years ago in Denmark. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of architects brought it to the U.S., and um, there's a co-housing community in Berkeley. There's another one in Oakland, and there's an article like 20 years ago in a local monthly newspaper um, talking about co-housing, and I just had this like light bulb of, I would love to live like that. Like, I would love to live connected to my neighbors, right? I'd love to live, you know, the, the, the in proximal community, like the, I didn't have that word, but like, you know, 20 households that are nearest to me, I actually know them. I can knock on their door any time. Like, we can hang out and, and have a beer, you know, on, on the porch. I can, I can borrow anything I need. Um, uh, you know, including like people borrow cars, right? They're like, oh, you know, my, you know, I, I got to get here. I don't have a car. Toss, you know, your neighbor who you know and you have meals with tosses you their keys and off you go. Um, you need to take an important phone call and you, you know, and your your kid wants attention at the same time. Well, you know, go knock on you know Becky's door and and there you have it. So like that article of like that that I've talked about co housing, it just I just had this sense of someday. Like, I want to live in a community like that. Yeah. Um, 
And I had the same sense with Jewish life. It was like, okay, I'm here in grad school. You know, I didn't really go to a synagogue except for Hillel. Um, but I had this sense of like, maybe I, you know, kind of discarded something that I shouldn't have discarded. So maybe when I finish grad school, I'll find myself settling down somewhere and I'll check out Jewish community and I'll um, check out co-housing. And a couple things happened. Um, I didn't graduate. <laughs> I finished my PhD. Yeah. Um, huh? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a goner. Um, um, and I didn't leave Berkeley. And and then on top of that, I, th I you know, after contemplating both kinds of community, you know, the, the light bulb was, wait a second, why not marry these two things? So anyway, that's kind of the genesis of this idea, kind of a, a, I'm also an only child, so that sort of plays into, you know, like, like when you when you don't have something and then you experience it and it's something compelling, you know, you're like, oh wait, <laughs> like, right? I, I needed this. Yeah. Um, so I guess you know all those things combined, and I just kind of this you know at some point had this idea to marry the two two, uh, two technologies for community, um, and then had the gumption at some point to be like, all right, you know, I want to do it. Um, so. I can keep talking. I don't no, know no, if any of that, no, no, any, I mean, any I, of that I like, provokes that, questions. But. It is. I mean, <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I think I think one piece that I want to introduce here, which I think is important, um, and, I, and I'm curious how we'll weave it in later. Um, what was your field of yeah. study? Because right? I think I, I have. I don't know, but I have yeah. some questions about how does that play into it a little yeah. bit. Um, that's one piece. Maybe we can talk about that in a second. But also, in terms of, you know, I just want to make an observation about the way you're describing a uh, what you were lacking as a, you know, as a child and yeah. as an adolescent, and how that kind of played into, you know, finding solutions for that, and maybe that will that will lead us into the why question of like why is yeah. this such an important, why is this an opportunity for the broader Jewish community, not only for, you know, often our solutions that we work on start from our own self exploration, but ending up being applicable to a much broader right. um, set of people. So we can talk about that. But first, I, I do want to introduce that for like from the biographical perspective, like what did you study? Now that right. and my I'm going to like you know project the way I think yeah. it's relevant, but, but uh, well, um, I studied economics. Yeah. I studied economics as an undergrad, um, and then I studied economics in grad school, seeking a PhD. Right. Um, and you know, I never finished and I never left. Um, ultimately, my heart wasn't in it. Uh, I thought I wanted to be a professor. Um, I thought the, I, I don't see it as particularly relevant to how I came to do the co-housing stuff, um, except for maybe. The reason, the whole reason I decided to go for a PhD is I thought I liked, I would like the life of a professor. Mm. And in particular, because I had done some travel and I thought, what it, you know, that's a job that could lend itself like visiting appointments, right? If I wanted right. to go to Italy for a year, you right. know, I wouldn't just be a tourist. Right. I could actually live there and I could learn the language and get, you know, and so I had this romantic notion, right? That I'm going to be a professor and I'll be able to, you know, okay. teach in different places. And like five years into grad, I'd forgotten that throughout the course of grad school. And five years into grad school, I kind of remembered that and, and thought, that seems lonely. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to bounce from thing to thing to thing. And it didn't, I didn't have the intrinsic motivation to actually write academic papers. Um, and there's nothing about what I'm doing now that's anything like writing academic papers. Right. So, you know, I just... Um, but in terms of the focus of, like, you know, econ the, you know econ yeah. economics is such a massive field, yeah. right? But, like... My, I guess where I would be interested to, to yeah, explore yeah. also is like part of the part of the issue that I think is happening, what we're seeing in general is, um, and I'm probably going to use this wrong, so you can correct me. But this is and this will be it. great learning. But like, it's like there's a a, uh, a commodification of Jewish uh. of, of identity and Jewish life in general, and everything is perceived as a service or a good that you can consume. And so therefore, the arena where these things happen right. are not in they're you know you're seen as an individual as opposed to a community. Right. Right, so like that. So like, if I can just provide you with a Jewish experience and you can go home and do your own thing, yeah, that kind of cheapens it. And I and I and I wonder if like part of the communal, for me personally, the communal lifestyle, which has been it's part of Jewish life for right. a millennium, is is exactly the opposite of that. Right, where it's not like a one-sided thing. It's not a transactional right. relationship, exactly. but it's much more exactly. of a co-creation, co-living, multi-generational, um, and a much more um, uh, robust or yeah. or diverse. Experience. It's not a religion. It's not just a. It's not any one of these things. It's all right. together. Anyway, we can go down that ramble. But that was my. That was my pre, pre, my presumption. Less so about the. Yeah. 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 So. So. Right. I mean, economics is. You know, a lot of economics is about like consumption and right. production and commodities yeah. and, 
most of it, there's a, there's a, there's a to, to give it its due, there is a strain within economic thought that's trying to think more, um, uh, I don't even, psychologically isn't even right, but, but fill in these missing pieces. Mm. Um, but I think those pieces are missing, and I don't, I don't think it, um, the contrast I would make is less to sort of the discipline of economics and more towards the experience of modern American life, mm. right? Um, modern American, you know, where it, it, whether whether explicitly or implicitly, like what's celebrated most is the individual, um, and you know, and 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 the idea is like, well, hang on a second, like maybe that isn't the right orientation, right? Maybe, you know, being part of something bigger than yourself, belonging to something, having connection, supporting people, caring for people, um, maybe that's at least as important. I mean, I would argue that it's way more important, but, you know, either, what it, it's at least as important. And so um, um, we've kind of given that up. Um, you know, the same thing with, like, you know, what's more, what's more important, um, uh, and our, our mutual friend, Elad, gave me some of these ideas, so I want to credit him, yeah. but what's more important, like, um, um, meaning or success, right? Which one do we kind of, you know, put on a pedestal in, in, in our culture? Um, and so, you know, it, apparently, it, it seems to, I would argue it's success, but, you know, y y how do you, so, so how do you, how do you then recover meaning? Like, where do you, you know, if you're living in this culture where kind of the, the guide, the lodestar, the guide, lodestar, the guide star, whatever it is, is, is success. Um, you can't reorient towards community and meaning and connection and belonging and support and care um, and something that's relational rather than transactional. You can't do that if you live isolated and individualistically and you have to, you know, you're stuck consuming your Jewishness as a, as a commodity. Um, and, um, you know, you you get to experience and express your Jewish self only when you're in a Jewish context, right? So, you know, what, what's, what's, what's the vision in Brooklyn Moshav is that, um, is that it, it will, let's create a context that is both Jewish, um, not exclusively so, and we can talk about that if you like, um, and that's also um, a, a communal, so it's both. And, and, and in that context, you know, your, your tradition has a lot more meaning um, because what is, at the end of the day, what does your tradition do? It helps you lead a good life in connection with other people. If it doesn't do that, why bother? Yep. Um, and, and even independent of the tradition, just, you know, the Jewish, Jewish life, co people in co-housing, um, co-housing, you know, co-housing is the model that we're adopting, but people in co-housing talk about community glue. It's the... Um, the, 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 the ways people engage with one another that creates bonds between them. So, you know, in our case, we're saying, excellent, let's have this co-housing community and let's have a big component of this community glue, this engaging with each other, be through our Jewish tradition. So our Jewish tradition will support us being a community. And the other, you know, it also works in the other direction, right? Um, being together as a community lets us engage in our daily lives in our Jewish tradition, and it lets us mine them for meaning and mine them for things that speak to us, and and um, uh, and and you know, pass it along to our kids. Yeah. Uh, that was that was an early motivation as well. Like so, you know, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. I think it's I think it's incredibly compelling, and and and, yeah. and to me, it's not like sometimes you know when you're, the way you're describing it, it's much more exciting than when I would talk to myself in my head. But I think that it's <laughs> like it can be like for me as someone who's grown up within like the Orthodox tradition. It doesn't, not trivial, but like, it's like, it's, it's, it's like self, self apparent. Like, of course, you're supposed to live within a communal yeah. setting. Like, yeah. And, yeah. and it's interesting because when I do have similar conversations with other folks who come from an Orthodox background, yeah. we have an argument, right? We have an argument of like, uh, is, is community an arena where we can uh, uh, achieve or express our, our, our Jewish self uh, in its best, mm -hmm. uh, best way? Or, or the inverse, right? We're like, we're like, like we do Jewish so we can have community, right? Right. Um, and right. and the way you describe it, it's like both, right? Like you, like I, you know, it's the glue, but it's also you know, it's I, a chicken and egg yeah, thing. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't I don't see them as distinct. In fact, I don't think one could exist nearly as robustly without the other. Yeah. 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 So I I'm I'm curious just like because you mentioned that the first or the the pioneers of of this model of co-housing, I don't think it's an accident, right? We're we're architects and <laughs> brought it over here, right? Yeah. But there's there's something to be said there about like it's not just 
you know, there's, you know, community can be, it can be something very um, uh, theoretical, right? right? Like, you know, we can community across time and geographies because right, we're right, bound right. by this. But fundamentally, there's something that's very, I think, uh, concretized, right? When it's, when it, there's like a material component, right? Like an yeah. architect's like, how do we design space? How do we build a place <laughs> where we can actually g come together yeah. and, and do this? And so it yeah. encourages it. So it's not just this. And I think that part of like, what we're seeing in certainly, 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 like in suburban America, where none yeah. of, it's not conducive to any of this, right? Right? Like you have right. these large yards, and, and 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 like large, you can't. There's no sidewalks, or you can't park. You have to drive yeah. everywhere. Like none of that's conducive yeah. for communal living. Um, it uh, it valorizes the individual as opposed right. to kind of creating this. And there's and there's been attempts to 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 correct that with community centers, etc., which right. is huge. But but uh, but something about just like understanding that the proximity. And allowing people to really uh, interact on a daily basis. Yeah. Is is is. is when do we is, have our best experiences as Jews? Like if you know we come together for services, right? We or you know if services aren't your thing, we come together for kiddish right. after, right? And yeah. um, we you know I mentioned summer camps, like you know weddings. Um, we 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 do it even if we do, even if we do um, you know the tikkun olam things that people do. Yeah. You know you're not like. You aren't. You're doing. Those are generally projects that are done with other people, yeah. even Jewish learning, yeah. right? You know, you're very familiar with this. But you know, we don't. We don't cloister ourselves and read a book. We we pair up in chevruta yeah. and we you know we really put our heads together and interact. Yeah. Um, everything happens in that interaction between you know everything happens. two people or more. Yeah. and I and, think it's. Um, and, well, because you were mentioning like so, proximity, yeah, and I, yeah. I think I wanted to just dig into that yeah. a little bit. Um, you know. Like, right, you know, our post-COVID cultural moment, right, we've all, you know, we were all sort of isolated. We got together on Zoom. Right. And now we're able to, you know, not get together on Zoom. Um, we could have done this interview on Zoom, but we're not, right? We're, we're in person. Being, being, actual, being there with someone makes a difference, right. um, a huge difference. And you don't, you can't describe that. Like, you, can't, you just have to be in it. And yeah. once you're in it, yeah. you, you sort of get it. Like, um, uh, it, you know, and, and it's not, it's not a... Um, it's not a panacea, right? You know, people have problems relating to other people sure. in community, right? <laughs> they have conflicts. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, there, there is something about being connected to, to people who are right there. Um, you, met, you, you, know, you mentioned the design and the architecture. Um, and that, you know, it's maybe telling that it was a pair of architects that brought it to the U.S. Um, um, there, it, it, and it's very true. Like, so, so the, the, the design is meant to um, encourage connection and discourage things that get in the way of connection. So we're building an urban co-housing community, right? That means it's in, a, in, in one building. We'll have 36 homes in this building. Um, tons of shared common space, indoors and outdoors. But most co-housing communities uh, are more suburban. Mm -hmm. And so they're more on a campus than in a, in a single building. But the way that campus is constructed is, right, there's communal space that's kind of at the center. Um, you don't have driveways. You don't have cars between the homes. The cars get demoted, right? Mm -hmm. They're on the periphery um, so that there's nothing between the people. And the people can interact without having to worry about the cars. Um, the, 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 the park, you know, where you come into the community from where you do park your car, you come directly into communal space. Not, you know, it might be more convenient, you might think, to go straight to your front door, right? right. That's a little easier. I'm coming home, long day. I just want to get home, right? It's set up so that that's not the easiest thing to do. The easiest and natural thing to do is to go right into the main communal space. Why? Because you will encounter your neighbors. You'll encounter these people that you know. You'll encounter these people. Um, we haven't gotten into the, like, what happens in a co-housing community, but you'll, you'll encounter these people that you have communal meals with two, maybe three, maybe even four times a week, right? Not every meal. You, the, you know, so part of this model is you have your own private home. It's a complete private home, just like any other private home. You own it legally. It's a condo. Operationally, um, it doesn't operate pretty much anything like a condo. It operates very communally. There's a whole layer of cooperative culture on top of this. Um, but you, but you know, so you come home at the end of your day, and you go through the communal space, and you encounter people that you have meals with a couple times a week. That maybe you're in a book group with, and maybe you go hiking with, and maybe you watch their kids, or they watch yours, or they bake brownies and give them to your kids, and you go, oh, there's sugar, but okay, who cares, <laughs> um, right? I'd rather, I'd rather have my kid, you know, eat too many chocolate chip cookies that that his surrogate bubby made, than you know, than not eat that cookie, but sit alone, sit alone on his iPad and just kind of gla eyes glazing over, and you know, I'd rather have him be a little bit. Um, 
maybe this, I never thought of saying something like this before, but you know, maybe I'd, have him, I'd rather have him be a little bit like nutritionally diabetic than like, like spiritually diabetic, mm. right? Um, so I think I'm kind of all over the map here. I'm not sure I'm responding to no, no, but certainly, questions I mean, you were asking. No, but, for sure, but you're bringing, you're bringing it back to this idea that how, how space plays into this, into creating mm. that communal structure. And I think that you know, from a traditional perspective, like that was the idea of an Eruv, right? This idea that on, sh that on Shabbat you yeah. have to... You know, what, what are the, what's the realm through which we can carry and, and kind of yeah. coexist? And that was just an evolution of, a, of what probably was much more similar to a co-housing situation where you had these groupings of homes that were much yeah. closer together. So how do we replicate that when we start growing beyond or outside, the, you know, yeah. the, that, uh, that immediate uh, uh, neighborhood and then bring it back to the Berkeley Moshav and, and creating this like, um, uh, it's a, you know, it's a, I don't know if a building is the correct term, but like this, you know, a much larger space because that's inside, outside, all that right, stuff, right? right? But like in that sense... Um, uh, allowing people to, to integrate. So I think we, you know, we talked about nicely about like the, some of the why. I mean, your person, yeah, the yeah. personal why, for sure. Yeah. But, and, and we're starting to you know, uncover some of the layers of like the communal why. And I think that yeah. I would like to, you know, you know, if, um, it, to take this kind of and say, all right, so if let's say, so if this was a solution, maybe before we get into the broader solution, how can this can be replicated in other places? Right. Let's get first into, like, so it solves, it you know, allows for us to, to, to express our Jewishness and our Jewish identity yeah. in a collective setting. Um, create that communal support um, where where we can really live, and then how? But like, what what other areas where does this address from a communal perspective in terms of of um, uh, of housing or or relationships or or identity and, and education and yeah. some things that come to mind? I mean, you know, educationally, um, you know, I'm. I mean, we're sitting here on the campus of the, the beautiful JCC, right? Enormous JCC, all kinds of programming. Um, but I'd still much rather not have to make the trek out to the JCC and have this, you know, administrative process that kind of has to create all this programming for me. I'd much rather have be in an organic setting um, where Jewish life is happening all around me. It isn't happening, you know, on my street. Communal, neither communal life nor Jewish life is really happening on the street where I live. Right. So, you know, this is one solution, create a JCC and have people come to the JCC and have the JCC do all this programming. Another solution to, you know, Jewish education and Jewish, um, Jewish learning and just being more, more well-versed in your tradition, it's, you know, we have this amazingly rich tradition that most of us can't access as well. What if we could access that more organically? Right? What if, um, you know, through your neighbors, through your neighbors that, that you know, this, this person does Jewish music, this person um, does Jewish art, right? This person's really involved in text study, you know, this, you know, this, you know, this person is teaching Nigu Nimo, you know, whatever it is. Like, um, um, I, one of the motivations for this was thinking about educating my kid uh, in Jewishly and thinking, you know, what are the options? Um, you know, I hated Hebrew school. Most, that's not, you know, that's a strong statement, sorry. <laughs> but a lot of, you know, a lot of people didn't have the best experience. And maybe, the, maybe the, 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 the most generous way to say it is that, you know, a supplemental after-school Jewish education program, is, it's hard for that to be adequate. Yeah. Um, and it's also hard for it to be engaging to a kid who's already spent six, eight hours a day at school, whatever it is. Um, so what's the alternative to that? Well, the alternative to that is day school. And day schools are fabulous. Um, but they're also not for everybody, and they're also really expensive. So, how can you give your kid, a, you know, like you know, get get Jewish Jewishness in, his, in their kishkas, right? With those as your, you know, if those are your only two options, right. what if another option was to um, have have it, you know, have them live closely connected, on daily life, thirty other families. Um, where, where being Jewish is all around you. Whatever being Jewish means, it's, it's all around you. So educationally, that, um, I, forget the rest of, I forget exactly so the, the question so the I was So the second question was I, that I had, because this came up in, our, in some of our other conversations, is like, does this solve um, uh, uh, access to housing? Access. And, yeah. It doesn't solve that problem, um, at least not yet. So um, there, uh, there's a couple of factors in this, right? When we're creating co-housing communities, you either have to build it or you have to find existing housing and sort of, you know, make it amenable to, yeah. to co-housing, to a communal, to communal life, which means that you have to devote some chunk of the real estate, some chunk of the physical environment um, to community life. So um, a lot of people, so there's 180 co-housing communities around the United States. Mm. Um, we are only the second one to do this in a Jewish context. Oh. So a little shout out to Craig Ashgallo, Stacy, <laughs> Safira, 
is her last name Eskello? I'm blanking, but Craig and, Craig and Safira in Vermont, they have a seven, house, seven home Jewish co-housing community awesome. in rural Vermont called Living Tree. They were the first, we are the second. Nice. So 180 communities, none of, these, none, none of the other ones are Jewish. Um, is that because Jews, start, like as yeah, immigrants, yeah, yeah. were like fighting so hard to belong, were so averse to, like you, you Not, mentioned Lower East Side, like I, yeah, that yeah. wasn't like, I romanticize it, but like it wasn't, wasn't the best. No, you know? yeah, it, well, it, it wasn't the best. I mean, it was tenements, so, yeah. but you know, it was, it was, I guess it was better than where we came from, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people felt, you know, they had some success, or they had so opportunities, and they, and they left. Um, I don't, I don't, I mean, I, co-housing is just hard to create, period. Um, uh, which I think is kind of where I was going. Um, so there's only two of these. Right. Um, it, it, is, it doesn't solve the problem of, um, it, uh, of, of the cost of housing okay. S- because we, we, we have to build it, right? The, it's, it, and, and so I'm, I'm a little all over the map here. Um, That's okay. People think about, people think, you know, think about you can you know, find existing places and create community you know, there and figure out how to make it work, or you can build it yourself. Of the, I don't know where I was going. The 180 co-housing communities that are out there, most of them, the vast majority of them, are purpose-built. Um, it turns out it's not a whole lot cheaper or easier to kind of adapt what's already out there. Either way, um, you're having to pay the cost of building housing, and you can't really make that less expensive. It, it, building costs are what they are. Um, beyond that, because you have to have communal space that's shared, right? That that you know, if someone's buying a home, um, they're you know, if you're building housing and you're not building communal space, then the prices have to cover the cost of the housing. But if you're building housing that has communal space, the prices have to be higher, right. not lower, which right. is what we'd right. like, but higher because you've got to cover the cost of the communal space. Um, you know, in my, you know, if, 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 if I could, if I could um, you know, in, encourage or inspire the Jewish community to sort of support things, it might be to sort of like, you know, help us, like, let's turn this communal space. One op- I don't know if I like this, but maybe, right? One option is to sort of, like, maybe that Jewish space is funded by the Jewish philanthropic world, and, and they get to use it, right? And, and, and you know, and to some degree, right? It's ours and theirs. Um, I have some ideas I like better, which I can talk about, but that's, our, that's the biggest problem to this kind of housing, is that it, it isn't any less expensive. So I'm doing it here in Berkeley. We're facing barrier construction prices, and, and that's kind of the most um, uh, disappointing thing of the whole project, is I can't make it a whole lot cheaper. Mm. Now, what we could do, um, you know, t- we, we, we think about affordability, and we think about um, you know, what are different ways to make it more affordable? Well, what if someone who had the resources were able to own some of the homes and make them available as rentals? Mm. Uh, that, that could, that's one thing that could help, so you didn't have to have you know, this whole the down payment, the nest egg, to, to be able to afford it. Um, um, another way, another idea that we've had that we'd love to pursue is um, uh, we, uh, we call it equity sharing or co-investing, where the resident would own a fraction of the home, let's just say half, and an investor would own the other half of that home. And it would be a long-term investment. Um, it'd be you know, a kind of an impact investment. It wouldn't be an investment for the highest return possible. It'd be an investment for some return, and for part of the return is I get to make it possible for this family to live in this community that's giving, you know, that has all this to recommend it. Um, and they would, you know, they would see their return eventually from the appreciation on the house when the house sells. And you know, then there's monthly costs and insurance and, and things of that nature that the resident would probably pay. Um, but there's, you know, so that's so the 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 key to that model is it's not we wouldn't be looking for gifts. We wouldn't be looking for people to sort of like give someone money so they can afford the home, right? Um, to they, we wouldn't be looking for them to bear the cost we'd be looking for investments so that they could help bear the risk or just even make it possible in the first place. Right. Um, you know, so you know, the, the idea is it really would be an investment. That money would, would ultimately go back to the source. Right. Right? Um, same thing with creating these communities. Like we can, you know, to, to create Berkeley Moshav, um, we, I, there is a very gener- generous and anonymous supporter who made a very generous and anonymous loan to the project. Um, and, Jewish Federation was involved, and Hebrew Free Loan was involved, but ultimately we got a, a very large zero interest 
long-term loan that let us buy the property. Um, and without that generosity, we wouldn't have been able to kind of get off the ground. But like, so, you know, can I, can we solve the housing crisis with this, not in its current form? Can we, in, in terms of affordability, but can we ha solve the housing crisis in terms of helping people live in a place where it nurtures them and gives them meaning and feeds their soul and has connection and all of that? Absolutely. Um, can we do more of these? Um, that's one of the things I intend to do after getting, you know, Berkeley finished. Um, I'd love to. I'd love to do them in like less expensive regions of the country, um, and more. You know, but anywhere really. But you know, I'd love to. Um, I think the model's really replicable, and at the end of the day, um, um, you know, the the. The upfront, the, the the upfront, the upfront investment is large, but the, you know, at the end of the day, most of that investment goes back. So the upfront, the expenditure isn't all that large, and the difference is, um, and with with all due respect to all to, to to all the other programs that do it differently, right? Most programs that try to engage people in Jewish life wind up doing they're doing it like very broadly, but not very deep. So you're moving now for a second. Just I want to oh, yeah. name this. I'm, no, no, no. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm following. Go for I want, it. But I want to name it so that yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. just a signal. So you're moving from like, we talk about the affordability and how to make uh, right. Jewish life accessible. And you're saying um, that's there's a whole set of issues that can be solved. But what you're really solved, like the, the, the attempt here, and this is why maybe the, that that anonymous supporter bought into yeah. it, was like, the, the, you know, you're saying, what's the need? The need yeah. is... Um, we, you know, we need we need more engaged people. Got to make it more uh, accessible, but not just accessible as a one-off, but like much more uh, a deeper kind of connection to community and Jewish identity. Yeah. And this is the way to do it. Yes, you invest. Your you'll get your investment back. It's not a, it's not a tax. You know, it's not a tax benefit donation right. really. It's not going through right. a five hundred one c three and all that stuff. But but your in terms of your impact, if your goal and your impact is to create meaningful multi generational Jewish life, right. This is a this is one solution of right. maybe many. Um, that might not be, maybe one day it can be, you know, scaled, but, right. but even if it's for, you know, several of these smaller communities, it, it ensures a much more sticky kind of uh, approach. That's right, so you're saying, yeah. like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, the depth of experience you get, you get a much deeper yeah. depth of experience. Um, and, you know, and that experience is also organic. Yeah. So you don't, you know, you're sort of weaned off of the institutional approach right. and able to go back to having the community approach, the village approach, the approach where, like, um, you know, you own your own Judaism and, um, and, and you're very comfortable owning your own Judaism. You don't, you don't need an institution right. to help you plug in. You're, right. it, you're just, it's part of your life. You learn to feel, it's like, sort of like, being an Israeli, yeah. a Jewish Israeli, anyway, yeah. like it's like you know, it's 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 an atmosphere, yeah. um, and I don't know how else, you know some some communities are pretty lucky to have that, but not very many. I mean, I think yeah. actually in Berkeley we're pretty lucky that you can have that if you want it, but um, it takes some effort, but it's there. But most communities I don't think have that kind of thing, and yeah. so right, so the the depth of experience, the attachment that that brings. Um, and the the ability to um, uh, to kind of like independently experience and express your Jewish identity um, is huge. Yeah, and I think you know you, you raise or something very um, very relevant to our work at Z three. But I think you know very. Um, uh, I mean, the proposition of I'll, I'll say this differently. I think that uh, in many ways the way that Jewish religion practice kind of developed over over the years was was to figure out what is the best way to create. Um, I mean, there's the theological and the practical. I'm not going to get yeah. into that, but I, I'm, in terms of like, how do you sustain and develop an identity without sovereignty? Because mm. for for so like, you know, in order right. to kind of self-govern, to have the agency to create, right. right, and not just in specific arenas. If it's a religious arena, particularly, right. Right, that's where we often place Judaism as a religion. Then you need to be able to have um, like a, a domain where it can come to practice, right? Where it's not just in that sphere, but in other ones as well. And so if you don't have sovereignty, then how do yeah. you do that, right? So it's yeah. what you eat, what you dress, who you marry, where do you live, you know, how do you do loans, how do you, right. how do you enforce the right, laws? Right, and, you right. know, like, if you look at the totality of the system, right, of the, you know, of, uh, you know, the Shulchan Aruch, the code, and, yeah, and yeah. the other ones as well, and, and throughout the years, it was, it touched every single realm of right. life. And there was a theoretical, one day there was a sovereignty, but, but, but by and large, as a Jewish, you know, as, a, as, as 
communities living, you know, in the diaspora, you know, if it was referred to once as exile, diaspora, whatever, we can put that language aside, but, but outside of a sovereign context, yeah. um, if you strip away also the religious aspect, it's very, 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 very difficult. Yes. Right? And then what ends up happening, I mean, that kind of, especially here in America, I believe, um, it feeds right into like the, you know, the, the consumerism and the individualism of, of, the, of society and that everything is kind of stripped down from, its, from its, your ability to do it in yourself. And you right. have to, and you're, you're reliant right. on others, right? right? And, and I'm, look, I'm no, no expert, but like, <laughs> yeah. you know, this idea, it's, it's, it's very, um, it's a very Protestant version, I guess, of, uh, of, uh, of Judaism in that mm. there's like, or, or Christian in general, where there's like a, you have an agent who's responsible to give you yeah. that, and you come once, whatever, and, and, it's, and it doesn't really, you know, permeate through the rest of your life. But, yeah. but you know, from a Jewish perspective, it's, it really is supposed to be in a communal setting. And I think that like, what I find that's very resonant, and then this is like the connection to Israel, is if you have a domain that's entirely or mostly Jewish, and Jewish means a whole set of things, yeah. where you can express and, and try it out, then it also it weans you off the the establishment because you're not you're not you're not reliant on them to give you those doses of Jewish identity right. rather than it's every day. And then you know we talk about um, the the finance of of it. Like if I had to make a choice, right? Yeah. Um, you know if I if I had to spend you know X amount on a house, right? You know, that's, that's a huge investment, Nesek, et cetera. But, if I, and then, but that can remove the need for me to set to, to a Jewish day school or a camp yeah. even, yeah. right? There's something to be said that for, that for that equation. Now, everybody has their own uh, uh, calculus when it comes to this, but, but I am entirely drawn to this idea of, of, a, uh, of, of a space, a domain, where you can kind of live your, your Jewishness through um, uh, a variety of ways and also as a Jewish professional like yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I would love a place where I don't have to be on you know where I don't have to be like right, the Jew right you know? right well that's one of the that's one of the yeah that's one of the points I've tried to make to people um, um, there's a there's an idea that floated around a little bit it hasn't yet caught on but like right what if Jewish institution um, owned one or more homes in Berkeley Moshav right. and were able to use it for housing their professionals um, right, it would be it would be like a win win win, right? The, the 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 organization would would it would be part of a compensation package for their professionals. They could afford to live here. For the community, we'd have someone with all this tremendous Jewish knowledge, sure. and for the people living there, right? They would they would right they wouldn't they would get to be civilians in this community, right? They wouldn't have to be the professionals. They wouldn't have to be creating an experience for others. Um, they'd be just part of the community. Everybody's creating it for themselves. Exa yeah. Exactly. I think that would be a, a fabulous way to. It's it's so um, it's so interesting, and I think you know back to the connection with Israel. I mean, I know there's models in Israel, and we can, you know, of like inspirations or similarities. Yeah. And we talk about that as well. But I think that you know part of the biggest differences between Israelis and and non-Israeli Israeli Jews and non-Israeli Jews. I mean, for Israelis, period, yeah. really, right? But specifically, if we're talking about if we're comparing or looking at you know Jewish communities and Jewish communities. Um, the, the, the biggest difference, you know, there's, there's a whole set of reasons why the relationship is complicated, right? But the biggest mm -hmm. difference is that for Israelis being Jewish, you know, they're not, they're, you know, broadly speaking, and this is not to cast any aspirations at anybody, but it is the reality, you know, you kind of, uh, you don't need to invest in cultivating a Jewish identity because you're Israeli, it's in the public square, it's in the, pub, it's in the water, you know, the holidays, the language, yeah. the practices, the, the references, the culture, it's everything. It's the culture. It's yeah. the culture, it's there. And here, you, it's really, it's, an extra, it's typically... Yeah. Or more often than not, an external experience, right? Where you have a bifurcated identity, where you're this and this and this and this, and that sometimes I'm also Jewish. Right. Um, and 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 then part of this here's like, how do we create a like a substrata that it's all Jewish? Right. Right. I'd uh, say almost all Jewish because almost, yeah. you okay. know we, it, it actually you know so one of the things that we're doing is we don't want to be exclusive. We do want to be focused. You know, have a center of gravity that's Jewish, yeah. right? Very and, and a pretty strong center of gravity, right? You know, not you know not Pluto, but you know maybe Saturn. Yeah. Um, uh, in terms of the gravitational pull, um, but you know, we also want to be open to anyone who wants to live in right. the community. So we do have people that aren't Jewish, both sure. whole families and you know partners. We you know, and we're we're aiming for diversity in a whole bunch of ways. By the way, including you know the, the Jewish spectrum. Right, for sure. Um, we're trying to accommodate everybody. So yeah. I don't know. I just I guess I just wanted to be clear because I hadn't yet. Um, you know that it isn't it isn't exclusively a Jewish experience, for sure. but, but it's, meant to say, it's very focused on a Jewish experience. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. One hundred percent, and, and not yeah, yes, that's a very important clarification. Yeah. But I, but but I mean like a like a substrate from an identity perspective, right? For someone who grows up in this in this yeah. environment, and their main point of reference, right? Like, why is, what's so powerful about camp? 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> yes, it's in the summer. Yes, but but really, 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 I think, and I and I wonder if there's like real um, uh, aside from anecdotes, actually re yeah. real research to back this. But it really is the only place where Jewish kids or people who want to buy into the system, right? I'm, I'm really trying to stay away from any kind of categories or definitions. But yeah. like anybody who wants to be in a Jewish environment, that's the only time in their life, basically, yeah. that it's entirely immersive. Yeah. Right. They're like yeah. secluded out somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. There's no distractions. And everything you do is Jewish, and like I think for as for you know, it I, becomes I, the culture. It becomes, it becomes the, com exactly. the culture, but it, but it's like also it's not only that it's, it is the culture, yes, yeah. and also as an individual. And I think and I'm and I'm curious about this. Like the way I describe it, yeah. is like the difference between going to a supermarket with a kosher aisle uh -huh. or going to a kosher supermarket, <laughs> right? Like where yeah. I can only go here, and like I kind of you know, but the rest yeah, of it yeah, I have yeah. to keep on looking and checking. But right, if I'm right. store, I'm like ah, finally I can just knock things into my store, you know, into my cart <laughs> as I you know walk down the thing. Yeah. But the point being that like it's the only place where we don't have to apologize. Or, or create these different or even or, think about it. Yeah, exactly. it's, just it's, be. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, just be exactly. Yeah. You can just be, and you can, and you're, and, it, and you're Jewish by default. It's, it's in that. It's the climate, yes. right? It's, yeah. you know, it's not. Um, yeah, you're not. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know what else to. I don't know what to add to no, that because no, that's but, exactly but that's, right. So, so if we're um, able to create, so if you're able to create this in, 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 in Berkeley, right? Yeah. that's the plan. You know, and there's a, I know there's a timeline. You have a certain amount of the. You have 36 units, right? And a certain amount of it's already. They're already. Yeah, uh, we have 36 homes. homes. We have 24 spoken for. Okay. Um, we get. We're planning to start construction this summer. That's, that's uh, so exciting. I know. <laughs> like, yeah, even that. <laughs> you that, believe that, it? that like... No, that hasn't even <laughs> sunk in to me yet. That we're going to start building this summer. About two years from now, should be move in. Right. Um, you know, with 12 more families, we'll be full. And um, I don't know where were we going with this. No, so I'm, I'm curious. Um, I mean, like, if you want, I mean, I think people should. I, I do think. I don't want to spend. Yeah. People should go visit your website for yeah. information on how to do this. It will be in the description of the link, et cetera, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, because there's a process involved and how to get, you know, how to how to become uh, an explorer. Yeah. And then, you know, and then if it's if it's the right thing, there's there's a whole yeah. and it's just a me and I and I it's such a delicate it's such a like a um you know, it's it's a delicate not delicate, what's the room for? It's a fine line to to kind uh -huh. of walk where you don't want to be exclusive, right? And also, like, because around community, you want to make sure that people have at least the right intention coming uh, in and clarity. And, like, um, maybe meet the, have, like, um, to set expectations, right? Yeah. Like, you come in, you're, you're, you're expected to participate in the community. You're expected yeah. to contribute of your time and your, you know, your talents in a way, right? Yeah. Like, if you're, you know, um, uh, and I know self-selecting, but still, there's probably, like, some gaps. And, um, and that's a whole process that you can, we can get into. But, I, but I'm yeah. curious to hear about, like, because you did, you named this. This works. Two years from move in. Yeah. Roger's sitting in his, you know, <laughs> with the family and, and they're, everything's well. Like then, then what? what? Then what? Yeah. Um, then more. Like, more. like so. I, you know, I got into this um, when I got into. It takes. It took. It's taken a lot of effort to learn how to do this. Like I'm certainly not doing it on my own. I'm, right. you know, there's um, the one of the Katie McCammett, one of the people who brought co-housing 30 years ago from Denmark to the U.S. is our co-housing consultant. Oh, nice. Not only that, awesome. she has this kind of like year-long intensive training program that I I was part of the initial cohort. Um, you know, so I did that learning. I've been to tons of co-housing conferences. I've been to the pre-conferences where the professionals show up. Like I'm, you know, I've, it, it's it, I've devoted years of my life and and um, um, you know sacrificed. Um, you know, sacrifice time and income and all of this to kind of get this off the ground, right? This isn't a one-shot deal. Right. Um, I, you know, in, this is both create this community in Berkeley um, because I want it to exist and sort of like proof of concept, like, you know, we can do this. Um, here's what it looks like. Here's what it feels like. It actually works. People will actually, um, you know, invest and, and move in even in a place that costs as much as Berkeley does. Um, you know, so I want to go to... Denver and Cincinnati and Portland and Seattle and um, you know you name it any any place D Detroit um, you know I've had conversations in LA I've had conversations with people in different places over time um, I haven't really had the bandwidth to to do other projects but now um, you know as Berkeley starts once Berkeley gets under construction so six months a year from now um, I should have time and now experience to um, get other projects off the ground. Um, and there's plenty of help as well, right? There's like you know, it isn't all me. We've got, we've got a consultant. We've got developers that have experience with co-housing, architects now have experience with co-housing. Um, but you know, the um, you know, I've, I'm trying to put this on the radar of lots and lots of people. Um, you know, I just I would really love to replicate this in different places, in different contexts. Right. So right, what's our context? It's very pluralistic Jewishly, um, and we're trying very hard to be multi-generational. Um, 
Uh, and we are. We've got you know we've got at least six households with kids right now that are part of it. Um, but in other places, it can be you know it can be variations on a theme, right? So we're we're pretty urban. It doesn't have to be that urban. It can be suburban. Um, it can doesn't have to be multi generational. It can be you know really kind of founded on families, or it can be there's senior co housing models. Um, uh, I tend to love the multi generational version of it, but you you know. Um, and you know they can have a different. Each one can have a different center of gravity Jewishly. Like you know, we can you know it can be. Um, uh, we have we have for example a kosher kitchen actually too. We have an indoor dairy kitchen and a smaller outdoor meat kitchen, um, so that we can accommodate the broad spectrum of Jewish observance. Right. Um, most of the people that live that that are that are part of Berkeley Moshav don't keep kosher, um, but we want to be able to you know have everybody that you know you know we can't hit the extremes probably, but within a pretty pretty wide breadth, we've got a lot of variation in Jewish observance. And again, like I said, you know, not everybody's Jewish. So what do I want to do? Um, I kind of want this to be the thing that I do in the world, ultimately, is... Um, well, you are. Well, well <laughs> I also have a day job, <laughs> yeah. which, I, you know, um, but, you know, I'd love, I'd love, you know, I mean, you know, sure, Creating one Jewish one Jewish co-housing community, one urban moshav would be fantastic. Um, all the more, all the better if I could create, you know, ten or fifteen of these, or at least maybe not create them, and but 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 be the catalyst or the consultant or whatever that helps them all get off the ground. Yeah, that'd yeah. Be incredible. I think you know, in terms of like our like Z3's mission in general, like I think where I see the uh, the alignment is, you know, I. I I, we don't have the solution for the housing piece, but in terms yeah. of like this idea of needing to be in community yeah. and what that means, right? And yeah. like not and to move away from like, I think the the misused or overused kind of like this idea of like pluralism and diversity, right. whatever. I think those are those are have been a little bit uh, diluted and removed of, of actual meaning. I think it's you know we have to be able you know you mentioned chavota earlier on. You mentioned sorry chavota earlier oh, on yeah. in terms of yeah. like a study partner, but the whole the fundamental piece there is is disagreement, yeah. not to valorize yeah. disagreement, but uh, to the, but to, right. to prove that we can live through right. that. And so like a co-housing situation will you know you're gonna have <laughs> you're gonna have clash of personalities and oh, interests and needs yeah. etc. But like you know um, the point isn't to create some kind of like. Uh, uh, fake uh, constant utopia, but like yeah. moments of it where where you kind of in that interaction are able to kind of swing that out. And I think that like from our perspective, we do that maybe in a larger scale in terms of like it's it still is like event based or or moment based where people yeah. can come in together and kind of experience that. But really, it's it's similar in that like in order for you know if we are committed to a Jewish, if we believe that there is value in a Jewish in a future for yeah. the Jewish people, and if we believe that there is that in that there is. Um, uh, uh, you know, that it adds not only to the individuals participating, but to the broad, you know, the broader context. Then we have to create um, uh, uh, the spaces, if it's for yeah. living and and otherwise, where we can we can do that. Because otherwise, like we'll continue kind of like uh, expanding as the universe does, yeah. even further and further <laughs> apart from each other. Yeah. And then and then there'll be right. in my mind nothing left. And so I. I I'm like I'm totally drawn to this idea of like <laughs> how do we create this thing, and so like the fact that you're saying that the Berkeley Moshav is step one in a much yeah. larger kind of approach, I, I think is entirely exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there's something in there that you mentioned. You were talking about, you know, that that like we come together in disagreement, right? Yeah. Fruta doesn't, you know, is yeah. where we kind of, you know, challenge each other with our ideas. Um, and you know, all the more so if you're living, if you, you know, not just two, but 36, <laughs> right? And we, we, and yeah, we actually happen to have 36 homes. A nice Jewish number. It was unintentional, uh, but I'll, I'll sure. take, I'll take it. <laughs> Um, I heard once a campaign on TV, so I gotta say this is like you know, oh. uh, like a fundraising campaign, and they're like uh -huh. for just nineteen dollars a month. I'm like, they're not <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, but but so that brings to mind cooperative culture, right. um, and that brings to mind it, maybe it opens a door to something that I think folks would be interested in, which is that um, you know there's there are some things going on in Israel mm -hmm. right now which are in some ways cooperative culture on steroids, but, all, but also very much like what, we're, what we are doing. Um, some similarities and some differences. So, um, um, you know, what, what, I'm, what I'm calling this very intentionally an urban moshav. And I'm using the moshav phrase because co-housing is much more like a moshav than it is like a kibbutz, right? So, you know, a kibbutz is pretty, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's shared lives, shared economy, and a moshav is less so, right? In moshav, you raise your own kids, you have your own income, even though it's, there's a communal enterprise at the center kind of thing. Right. Um, but in Israel now, so thinking of cooperative culture, there are some, in, in, recent, in, in the recent decade or so, um, there are 
a bunch of kind of under the radar urban kibbutzim. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and they they really are, many of them really are even more cooperative in their, in their life, in, in the way that they work than we do. Um, they do kind of, you know, they still have the kupa, right, the, at the center, right? Every, all, all income goes to the community and then it's, it's distributed as, as people need it sort of thing. Um, you know, there, I find that, I don't think that, I'm not aiming for that here. I don't think that would work here, but it, there's an inspiration there of like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I'm trying to introduce a certain amount of cooperative culture uh, here and like, you know, they've already got me beat. Not that it's a competition, right? Not that, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to get away from competition, I'm trying to be about cooperation, but, you know, they've got me beat in the sense of like, there's communities there that still operate like kibbutzim, but now they're in urban settings. Now they're solving the different problems within Israeli society. Um, there are networks of these kibbutzim, um, and they're not all, all kibbutzim, but they, they call them social activists or mission-driven communities. There are networks of them. There are, um, um, you know, there are, there are some that are labor Zionist in their, in their orientation. There are some that are Dati in their orientation, very religiously observant in their orientation. There are some, there are two networks of Jewish intentional communities for Ethiopian Jews, mm. right? Networks, like not single communities, but like groups of communities that, that you know, and that, um, you know, give them like opportunities for, for farming, not just to live in a kind of, in a, in a whatever, I forget the camps are called, or not camps, but the, how they, what, uh, uh, where they house people who newly migrate to Israel. I forget the name. Oh, the Merkaze uh, Klita, the absorption centers. The absorption centers, right? So, so instead of being an absorption center, you can actually be working on a farm kind of thing in a community of other Ethiopian Jews. Um, there are communities, networks of communities of Jews from the Caucasus. There are networks of, there are networks of Druze communities, yeah. right? There's all this going on in Israel, and there's like even a little bit of a connection between, well, there's a whole other, there's a whole other layer here. I don't know if you, if you sure, want to get yeah. into it. Um, so there's a program through what's now called Adama and used to be called Hazon. Um, the program itself is called Hakel. Um, to, to really summarize this really briefly, Hakel is an incubator for Jewish intentional communities yeah. around the world. Right. Um, they partner with Z3, by the way. Just they, for yeah, the, they, yeah, yeah, that's right. Just that's for, right. Uh, you know, that's right. For, and we, do, yes, but yeah. So, so one of the things Hakel does is it is, and, and how I know about these communities in Israel, so I'm trying to tie it all together, is they have they have study tours. You go to Israel and you spend a week visiting like 15 of these communities, and you stay overnight at some of them. Um, and so we got to experience these, and it's really inspirational. And it kind of, you know, I one thing I bring back is, you know, that this isn't, you know, especially earlier on, it was like this isn't such a wacky idea. It exists, right? Yeah. They're they're doing it there. Um, and you know, the other thing is how more, even more, how well developed the cooperative culture is in those communities. And then. The one piece, whether they're kibbutz, some of them operate as kibbutzim, some of them don't quite, you know, they're, they're not kibbutz oriented, they're just mission driven, social activist kind of thing. Um, but the one thing that many of them have that we don't have, and, you know, this is a question I've wrestled, wrestled with, is um, they, well, they have this mission at the center of what they're doing. Often they're, you know, there's like an NGO, a nonprofit right. that that might you know that might work in the local schools uh, or something like that, or or um, or or serve youth on the margins of society or some you know that that sort of thing. There's there's often some mission um, that these communities and the ones in Israel, these urban kibbutzim, social activist communities are organized around. In our case, like when I met them, I, you know, I had this feeling of like. Um, you know, not quite measuring up because we don't quite have that, right? That's, but that's, but I think well, it's, it's so different because like yes. they have the substrate of the yes, collective exactly. identity exactly. that's taken care of through exactly. the state. So now they can build the next kind of thing. You're, exactly. you're like, wait, we got to catch up. We have, <laughs> right. we have work to do. We right. got to first create that, that right. attachment, right. you know, and I think, yeah, so that, that I, I want to, you know, don't, don't be so hard on your, like, I think it's Well, no, no, I, like, I, I, I'm not that hard on myself. Yeah about it in general, I, I don't think about this every day, but yeah. when I encountered that, yeah. you know, it did sort of, it was like, wow, like that's what makes it an inspiration, right? right. They're, they're carrying it even further. Um, and I think that, you know, we do have a mission, um, but our mission is, is more like, you know, there's something missing in American Jewish society. Yeah. And that's, that's the communal aspect, that's the neighborhood aspect, the village aspect, right. the proximal connection, all the yeah. stuff I, I started with. Um, and that's really our mission. Like, right. let's, you know, first let's bring it back for a single community and see if we can do that. And then let's see if we can bring it back to other communities. Um, and 
the, another part of this mission isn't just, you know, we're going to have this really nice building in this part of Berkeley, um, and we're going to be a community to ourselves, but we don't want to just be a community unto ourselves. Right. We want to also be like a crossroads for the Berkeley Jewish community, and we get to be that partly because we'll be pluralistic, right. partly because the people who live at Berkeley Moshav will be members in different, different synagogues and organizations. And not only you know, is part of the idea to be outward facing to the rest of the Jewish community, the part of the idea is to be outward facing to the rest of the neighborhood. Like we are one, we will be one group of people, one community, one institution of a sort in, in, a, in, a, in a municipal neighborhood, in a local neighborhood, in a civic neighborhood. And you know, part of the intention is to um, be connected in that way as well. Like in my mind, I, I imagine like, you know, we'll have Sukkot, we'll have a communal sukkah in the middle of our courtyard and we'll invite our neighbors. Hey, come, you know, like, you know, like interact with us. Like it's not so weird what Jewish people do. We just have different traditions and this is ours and come experience it and enjoy it and, and you know, learn about us and we'll learn about you and, you know, or, or maybe we'll just, you know, we'll have this space. We'll be, a, we'll have this space in this neighborhood where, you know, like if the neighbors want to say, well, maybe the, sometimes they have block parties, I imagine. I don't know if this neighborhood does or doesn't, but some neighborhoods in Berkeley do. Um, but you know, like we'll have space. Like we can say, hey, guys, you know, like let's invite you over and watch a movie, any movie, like, you know, kind of thing. We can have our neighbors in and we can kind of, you know, and just connect that way. And we can just be good. Um, we can provide community. We can model community. We can be ambassadors of, of, of Jewishness to the community. Um, we can really be an, um, um, help there be more civic community yeah. um, in Berkeley. We don't want, you know, I, I talk a lot about, you know, what's going to happen within our walls, but it isn't just about that, yeah. I guess. We're... And I think, I mean, like, he's coming back to this idea for me, like how I think about the role of a JCC and like the title, mm. you know, like islands of sovereignty, right? Of like, this is like a place we can come together because yeah. otherwise we're left to our own devices and, yeah, and yeah, all, yeah. all the realms that you just described, right? If I'm the only Jew in a block party, how do I represent myself in the community? Like <laughs> yeah. I have to wear the, all that right, weight on me. Right, like, right. But if you can create that kind of, um, uh, uh, gravitational center yeah. for, com for communal life. It works both internally and, of course, externally. And I think it's, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. You know, um, if I wasn't burned from living in a building in New York for six years, I, you know, <laughs> we could, no, but uh, uh, um, I, I think it's really uh, an inspiring model. And I really do, like, I'm excited to see where it goes. You Thank know, I'm you. really, yeah. really, uh, I think it will be um, uh, successful here and hopefully, hopefully beyond. I, I'm really you know, I just, I, like, like there's say, so much there. From, you know, from so. your mouth to God's ears. Or, or um, I think <laughs> someone said this to me once, Emir Tashem and the creek don't rise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. So thank so, you, Roger, yeah. for joining us. This was uh, entirely um, uh, inspiring and educational. I really yeah. do um, uh, hope to, you know, to, to hear soon about, uh, you know, how you guys break ground. And I, and yeah. I just appreciate it. You Maybe we'll have you record doing. a podcast from there. Yeah, God willing. We have a little Maybe. podcast studio there. You know, be <laughs> one of those things. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity and the sure. chance to have a conversation. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us.